In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, and for us sinners now and in our day. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, it instruct the hearts of your faithful by light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the same Spirit may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lady of Fatima. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Paul and Terry. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it was Christmas Eve and uh, the Mexican grandmother had arrived from La Ciudad de Mexico. She was 90 years old. She was very sharp mentally, but very weak with respect to her hearing, as sometimes happens. And she was uh, loaded with goodies and gifts and pretty affluent. So she was in one room and her two grandchildren were in the adjacent room. The two boys were sleeping in the room and um, at about one o'clock in the morning, one of the boys got out of the bed and he knelt down and he started to pray. And this was his prayer, God, give me a new soccer ball. God, give me a baseball bat. God, give me a hundred dollars in his Little brother said, why are you yelling, God is not deaf? He said, I know, but grandma is. <laughs> so we want to be praying once again that we're not deaf to the way that God speaks to us in these exercises. By now, after having slept well and taking your, your uh, hour and a half siesta, you're probably very strong, you're very alert, you're very ready to really go deep, okay? They say good religious gets up, tw gets up at 4.30 twice a day, okay? <laughs> You'll understand that later, okay? But now that we're well rested, now it's time to be magnanimous. Magnanimity. Magnanimity means generous. Magna anima. Great solidness. Not pusillanimity, but magnanimity. Okay? How about using those two words in a cocktail party? <laughs> so what about our prayer catechesis? With the permission of this very noble group that I have before my eyes this morning, I'd like to extend my homily another three minutes. Okay? I'd like to relate our prayer catechesis to the uh, the message you heard about an hour ago. And it's, uh, it's on the prayer petition. So such a rich topic, but already hit 17 minutes, that was enough. I still had much more to say on the topic, so I'll extend another two or three minutes. When we pray, what, what should be the hierarchy 
on our list of prayers? I think that's a good question, isn't it? So th some of the petitions have transcendental value. Others less so. Others are not that important. So let's uh, start with the transcendental, the, those of transcendental importance. Once again, I'm going to be referring to my friend, your friend, Thomas Aquinas. He says, the first one you should pray for is actually for you, pray for yourself. I remember years ago, I was talking with my mother who was in the charismatic group, and she was saying, one of her friends said, you should never pray for yourself because that, you're an egomaniac. And my mom was consulting me whether or not that was, the lady was right or not. I think I'd come home from the seminary, said that lady is, is totally wrong. She said, you shouldn't pray for yourself, that's egotistic. You know, my friends, if we don't pray for ourselves, we're going to end up in hell, all of us. <laughs> we will. We have to pray for ourselves. So that's the number one on the list. You know why? Because no matter who you pray for, that person can reject the graces that God sends to them. But you don't have to. You can be open to it. That's why Aquinas puts ourselves first, because we are called to say yes to God right now. Right now. Ahorita, right now. The next on the list. About three years ago, a couple came in to me for pastoral advice. It was a married couple. They were married for more than 30 years. And they're fighting like cats and dogs. And I felt like... Uh, I've never done this before, but I felt like I was a, um, a referee for a boxing match. One came out sparring, and the other one was sparring, and I was trying to duck my head, you know? <laughs> I think they loosened my tooth a little bit, you know? <laughs> but it was just uh, 20 minutes where they're just attacking each other, you know? So I threw a curveball at them. After they end up by throwing mud at each other, I got a little bit of the mud myself. I spent about three minutes complimenting both of them on their good qualities. Because even in the midst of their attacks and their insults, I could see that there was innate goodness in both of them. I'd never really talked to them. I'd seen them at Mass, but I'd never really talked with them. They were not aware of the goodness in each other, even though they were married in 30, for 30 years. I was there with them for 18 minutes, and I could already see the goodness in both of them. But then, getting to my point, I asked them, the husband, do you pray for your wife? What? And I asked the, the wife, do you pray for your husband? What? They both never prayed for each other, and that's the principal reason why they had so many conflicts. Let me tell you a personal anecdote. Uh, I have an older brother that I think I fought with him two times in 17 years. Not bad, huh? We had a bunk bed together. The doctor. And you know, I think the reason why, very different in many aspects, is that before going to bed, mom and dad would always pray for each other, and they'd pray for us, because we're number one and two of the nine. Okay? Then mom and dad taught us to pray for each other. So mom and dad would be praying for for themselves, they'd be praying for the older one, 
and they'd be praying for the younger one, me. And then the older one be, would be praying for mom and dad, and he'd be praying for himself and praying for me. And then I'd be praying for mom and dad, and I'd be, be praying for the older one. Have I confused you? <laughs> <laughs> but there was a triangle of grace in which, and how many of you have siblings that only fought for two, two times in 17 or 18 years, no? Okay, maybe you got one or two, but we just, you know, and I see it not because of uh, the fact that we're so alike, but we're very different. But there was a constant flow of prayer, and prayer produces harmony and peace. What do you think? Interesting, right? So in the list, a priority, it should be you pray for yourself and you pray for your, your spouse if you marry. And you pray for your children. And you pray for your parents. And you pray for your siblings. And you pray for your blood relatives. And you pray for your friends. You pray for your colleagues at work. And then it has to be said, you have to pray for your enemies too, right? Didn't want to hear that, did you? No? But we have to even pray for our enemies. So there's a, a list of priorities, not to mention the people we have to pray for in the church too. That's important. So that's our, uh, that's our catechesis. Helpful? Say yes, Father. Yes, Father. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to extend our meditation on the joyful mystery because we have a very joyful group of individuals this morning, right? Well, I throw a damper on our joy. So you're going to be, once again, place your, find your place. Place yourself in the presence of God. Imagine Jesus, Mary, and Joseph looking at you with love. Is this is going to be meditation of the Holy Family. Imagine, imagine Mary and Joseph looking at you with love. And the little baby Jesus smiling at you. You start off by being aware of the presence of God, the prayer goes much better. Is it easy to talk to a person when he's present or absent? I think it's easy to talk to a person face to face than just to be talking to a person you don't see the person, right? It's common sense. So if you imagine them looking at you with love, it's you're already you're, you're into prayer. You're already walking on holy ground, as Father Tim says. Okay? And say your Hail Mary. And pray the Holy Spirit. We're going to see in the biblical passage today the real prominence of the Holy Spirit in this passage. Then the specific grace you pray for intimate knowledge of Jesus, once again made man, the incarnation, that you love him more ardently. Not anemically or phlegmatically, <laughs> but rather Ardently, okay? Passion. Love for light, for the Lord with a passion. And then follow him more closely. So there's the dynamic. Knowledge, love, following. There's the sequence or the dynamic.
So you're going to be contemplating the presentation. Presentation of Jesus in the temple. There's a lot here. You pray the joyful mess, you pray in two or three minutes, you don't have enough time to really go and plumb the depths of this mystery. Now you have your golden opportunity. And as St. Faustina said, reading to you, take advantage of the grace that God gives you in the moment. Try not to waste the opportunities that God has given to you. Okay, the first con contemplative scene could be, imagine traveling with Jesus, Mary and Joseph to the temple of Jerusalem. You're traveling with them. You're a traveling companion with the Holy Family. Happy to do that? You're a traveling companion with the Holy Family. What a, what a, great, what a great opportunity. Imagine walking side by side with St. Joseph. I can't wait, huh? Then Mary, who has the baby Jesus, he's only, what, 40 days old, huh? Just small. So there's a, there's a contemplative scene. You maybe never really contemplate that in detail. Now take advantage of it if you like. Walk with them, accompany them, help them, admire them, contemplate them, love them. You spend your whole hour just on that. You haven't even arrived at the temple yet, but you can do that. And then you arrive at the temple. Composition of place. Okay, back then that was one of the majestic scenes in the world. It may have been number one, okay? It took many years to build that and it was actually King Solomon that David said he'd never do it. So his son King Solomon. If you ever read through the Old Testament, everything that Solomon put together, you'll be blown away. The gold, the silver, the mortar, the workers, the laborers, the bricklayers. I mean, there's one chapter there where it just goes on and on, the most minute details on how much was put into this. And they didn't build it overnight, of course. And Jesus said it would be torn down why, by the Romans in the year 68. So this majestic temple, maybe the most beautiful in the history of the world, that's where they're going. Now I'm not going to give you a description of the temple, but there are different parts, no? The sanctum, santorum, the part of the women, the part of the men, there was the collections, it, it, was, it was huge, no? Almost like a little city. All right, so they're going up and you imagine it. I'm going to give you an image that a lot of you will be able to understand. Have any of you ever gone to the Basilica of Our Lady Guadalupe? It was totally vacant when you went there, empty? No matter when you go there, it's always packed especially in December, say December 12th, they say they got a million people that are coming and going the whole day. There's a lot of people. Or maybe you've been to St. Peter's in Rome, a little bit less, and now Padre Pio and Pietro Alcina, a lot of people go to visit. So imagine going to a pretty uh, prestigious uh, basilica or monument. So you can, you can kind of connect that with, that's more or less the way it was when, when they arrived. So the fact 
that Simeon's able to pick up Jesus is obviously is the grace of God. So you've probably seen thousands of people, thousands of mothers with little babies in, in their arms. So it wasn't like a little, little chapel in Timbuktu. This was a huge monument. So imagine you're there. People selling, and people talking, and people chanting, people coming and going. And all of a sudden, when they're walking, this, try to imagine an older man who's, uh, he's not a priest, he's a lay person. He's been waiting for many years for the Messiah. His name is Simeon. He comes on the scene. He was awaiting the consolation of Israel. My recent reflection on Simeon is this, and this could help you, is very rarely do you meet a person who in only three verses there is a direct, explicit reference to his relationship to the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe me, listen. Verse 25b, that should be the second part of it. The man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. That's 1, Luke 1, verse 25b, the second part. The Holy Spirit was upon him. What is your relationship to the Holy Spirit? If you find yourself floundering in prayer, if you turn to Mary first, then you pray the Holy Spirit with humility, you're going to be praying. I would say that that's almost an infallible technique you can use. The Holy Spirit was upon him. For your consolation now, you're all baptized, right? Are most of you confirmed? Well, you've got the Spirit not only upon you, you have the Holy Spirit within you. You even go beyond Simeon. One-upmanship. <laughs> yeah. You go, you go beyond him. He wasn't baptized. You were. He didn't receive the gift of confirmation. You did. So the power of the Holy Spirit should be more evident in you than, than in Simeon. If you're open to God's grace... If you're not open to God's grace, the Holy Spirit's work is it's frustrated in you. It's flustered and f frustrated in you if you're not open. We can reject the Holy Spirit. Venial sin is what you do not sadden the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about what a mystic is. What is a mystic? Someone that's open to the Holy Spirit. Don't let the word scare you. You know, I'm a mystic. No, You're all called to be mystics. You, me too. <laughs> mystic is he's open to the Holy Spirit like Simeon. That's verse 25. But what about verse 26? It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. So before he died, he was going to see Christ. 
So what does that mean? Okay, he's upon him. This one refers to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. The inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Okay, right now I'm going to give you a mini, mini course on mystical theology. Okay, when God took St. Faustina and Teresa of Avila and St. Margaret Mariella Cook, three great women saints, God spoke to these three saints through exterior visions and interior locutions. You hear me? Through exterior visions, there we have the divine mercy image, we then we have the sacred heart apparition to St. Margaret Mary Alaco, and Jesus appeared to St. Teresa of Avila also in visions. But more common than the visions were what are called locutions. What does that mean? Locution means is the interior voice of God within your soul. You people who've done the 10 week program with me and you've done the, you should, you should be aware of that by now. Do you have a spiritual director? Hello, spiritual directors, are you aware of that? <laughs> Maybe Alicia can give a class on that one, okay? The whole idea of locutions. Locutions, if you're quiet in silence, God speaks to you. It may not be the audible, audible word, but it could be. A very silent voice. It could be a light in your intellect, but God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit if we are humble, docile, and attentive. The book of Jacques Philippe, the school of the Holy Spirit, the essence of the book of Jacques Philippe, holiness depends on one thing, being docile to the Holy Spirit. being docile to the Holy Spirit. That's verse 25. Rather, that's verse 26. Okay, the following verse, verse 27, says, He came in the Holy Spirit into the temple. He came in the Holy Spirit into the temple. He's being moved by the Holy Spirit. And he's accepting that motivation. When I was right reading that this morning, it, it, this occurred to me. The good spirit brings us into the temple Okay, it brings in the temple, it brings us closer to the Blessed Sacrament. Amen? Amen. Fulton Sheen, in one of his talks, says, the more sensual, the more we give in to our sense appetite, the more sensual, the more we tend to walk away from the Blessed Sacrament. But the more ascetical, mortified, penitential, fasting that we are, how we're drawn to the Blessed Sacrament magnetically. Like that? Fulton Sheen. So we're living a life of, of luxury and gluttony and lust and materialism. We don't want to go in front of the Blessed Sacrament because we're ashamed. <laughs> we want to kind of hide. <laughs> We're living a life, uh, the ascetical life, we're really deni we're denying ourselves. We're, we're not dominated by our passions, but the spirit, we're drawn to the Blessed Sacrament. And we can bask in his presence. We can relish his presence. As I said two days ago, quoting the psalm in Thomas Dubay, look to the Lord and be radiant with joy. Look to the Lord and be radiant with joy. 
Look to the Lord, be radiant with joy. Okay, there's so much here. And I could go on and on, but I'll just give you one more thought. So the basic thought I gave you was traveling with the Holy Family, composition of place to recognize the many people there, this mystic who's able to pick up that that is really Jesus in the arms of Mary. And I've highlighted the importance of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church in the life of the Holy Family, in the depths of your soul. So I'd like to end with one last idea. In many of the contemplations, Ignatius says we should end with a colloquy. Colloquy means uh, Blessed Cardinal Newman, who will be canonized in October, thanks be to God, says that a colloquy is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the Lord. It's the retreat that Fulton Sheen gave in Dublin, Ireland, Core Red Lacor, heart-to-heart colloquy. That was the name of the retreat he gave in Ireland to the priests. Now the colloquy can be a simple colloquy, you're talking with one. It can be a double colloquy in which you're talking with, with more than one. It can be a triple colloquy. Now I'm try to maybe break through maybe our, our mental scheme that maybe doesn't want to go in other directions. We can become somewhat stultified, if you like the word, stagnant. Huh? is you can t talk with St. Joseph, talk with him. You know, maybe spend three hours if you want. Talk to St. Joseph an hour. He won't be offended. And then after you talk with St. Joseph, talk to Mary. You notice in my book, probably the highlight of my book I think the best thing that I have in the book that I wrote is I'm constantly saying, talk to Mary, talk to Mary, talk. Isn't that right? Talk to Mary, talk to Mary, talk to Mary. I think that's the best thing that's in my book. We're going beyond simply thinking up here, we're doing the rosary, we're moving a mile a minute. Okay, stop now and talk to Mary. And tell her everything that's in your, in your life and your heart. If you end up by doing this in this retreat, you're going to be transformed. You have to be. And then talk to the little child Jesus. Ask Mary to give you the child Jesus and kiss his little forehead. And tell, you, tell him you love him. That is done. This could be the best contemplation in your whole life. With your permission, one last idea. I'm going to try to break through your scheme now. I'm going to, tell you, I'm going to suggest you do something I don't think you've ever done before. You can talk to Mary and Joseph at the same time. You've probably never done that before. And you can talk to Mary and Jesus at the same time. You can talk to Jesus and Joseph at the same time. And you can talk to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph all at the same time. You got me? So you've probably never thought about this, but prayer is so rich. And what I'm saying to you seems so obvious and so simple, but it probably never occurred to us before. See how vast and rich and variety prayer it is? So let's pray for each other that this will be our best contemplation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among us, and blessed the fruit of thy Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Amen.